ready. I'm Courtney Callow. Um, uh, during the day, I'm Director of Development at Long Trail School. And this is Chef Jonathan Jacob, JJ, from the Barrels House in Dorset, Vermont. <laughs> So we are very excited. Um, I, I w am especially grateful to you for, for joining me. I sort of dragged him into this, and he's been really good um, sport about it. Um, I, we have an incredible German meal for you guys tonight. And I'm, I have to tell you, when I first started, I talked to Colleen down at the Barrow's house, and I said, she said, JJ's from Texas. He wants to do uh, Texan food. And I said, that's fine. I said, I'll go with anything. When we met, we found we are um, bosom buddies. Uh, we're both very German. We're very, very German. So tonight, I'm very excited because I was a German major in college. I'm, my father was German. My grandfather was German. So you have a huge German heritage as well. Um, so we started talking and immediately discovered that we both love German food and have that in common and decided to do a German meal for you. So, Chef, what are we going to start with? Well, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna start with kartoffel poppers. I'm not saying it correctly, but kartoffel kopfer. There you go. <laughs> uh, and with applesauce. So the applesauce. And so the the story behind that is that as kids, my dad, who's from Germany, we wouldn't eat the inside of a potato pancakes, and he hated wasting the food, so he put them in balls and called them kartoffel poppers. And when I got into the business. Uh, I was working at a pretty big German restaurant back in Texas, and uh, we were trying to execute a lot of potato pancakes, and a thousand a day it wasn't happening. So he's like, "Why don't you just make the balls?" And so we, we at one time I was doing a thousand, twelve hundred of these balls, and they're really good. I, I got to sample one before. They're yeah, yeah they're amazing. Uh, and then to unglaublich. And then the main. <laughs> I'm going to keep interjecting German because I get to speak German, so sorry. And, and, then, the main, and then the main dish is going to be Roladen. Uh, it's, uh, Roladen comes in many shapes and forms. It's uh, the eastern uh, uh, part of Europe, so Bavaria uh, is the origins of it. Uh, Czech Republic, Germany, Austria, Luxembourg, Switzerland, uh, Poland. So there's very many different types. So Germans to say, oh, Roladen, which one are you going to make, and this and that. And so... The one that I grew up on, the one my dad uh, made, is very simple. It's just eye around beef, uh, onion, a little bit of garlic, a pickle, and bacon. The pickle throws everyone off. Um, but the pickle adds the acid, adds the flavor. Mm -hmm. It essentially comes out almost like a corned beef is, is what it comes out to be. Um, but and we have the good stuff tonight. Yeah, you so... Should, if, you, uh, if you guys can see that typically rouladen is something that is... It's comfort food, but it's, it's meant to go around and, and, and be economical. Well, and what, the, and what the Germans were trying to do was, of course, eat every part of the animal. Well, eye around typically <laughs> is not a very, the best cut of meat in the world. So uh, what they did was uh, traditionally it's pounded. It's cut a little bit thicker traditionally, too. I, I slice it a little bit thinner to where it's a little easier to uh, eat and also so I didn't have to pound it. Um, and, uh, but the higher round, so you just you cook it on high is what it is. And uh, so it's, just, it's a very simple dish. Uh, uh, spatzel, uh, it's spatzel, uh, this spatzel came from the Vermont Spatzel Company out of Arlington. Um, it's gluten free. So what we try to do at the Barrel's House is try to do 90% gluten free on the menu as, as much as we can, including the cartoffel poppers. They, mm -hmm. they're, they're gluten free as well. And so this is a Vermont Spatzel or Spatzli. Um, and we're going to just cook it simply in herb butter, uh, salt, pepper, that's it. And then New Braunfels, uh, red cabbage. So, uh, with this, the recipe mm -hmm. comes from New Braunfels, Texas, from uh, the Junior League. Back in the 70s, the ladies from the Junior League graciously wrote about three different min uh, recipes for red cabbage. And this is one that I kind of like. So, uh, so that's what we did there. And that's it. All right, so where are we starting? We're going to start rolling the Roladen first. Okay. So the first thing you always want to do is always get your pan hot. So please... <laughs> So we're, so we're going to get that hot. You want to lay two, two pieces. And of course, if you get this done at the butcher, they, they have a large enough slicer where they can do the whole, the whole eye around. 
but you want it as long as you possibly can get. I season my meat really, really, really heavily because I don't season it once it gets into the pot. So, and also, uh, typically Germans and Eastern Europeans, they don't like a lot of salt and pepper, or Europeans in general, but we're Americans and we love our salt, so. Uh, so, a lot of onions. So, again, in that region, the most abundant, the two most abundant things in Eastern Europe that they can grow all year round are onions and potatoes. Hence the reason why you got steak and potatoes. So you lay it down, a lot of, a lot of onion. You lay that down. That is a lot of onion. Wow. Yeah. You lay down. <laughs> You're welcome. You, you lay down uh, two pieces of bacon and then your pickle and you just roll it. God, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. So I'll do a few. This might take a second. Can I try one? Sure. <laughs> so you want to put it down like that. Okay. There you go. So you want to go up high, as high as you can go. There you go, because you want to spread it out. The higher the better. So I'm, I am channeling my inner father tonight. My dad was a chef. And then some onions? And uh, so I told JJ, who actually looks a lot like JJ. <laughs> you needed curly Q mustache. You had a curly Q mustache. But anyway, so hopefully you're watching this, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the onion juice is great. The more onion juice, the more better. More onion juice, the better? More onion juice, the better. All right. There All right. There we go. And bacon. Bacon. Shinkin. No calories. No calories. Not at all. And then pickle. And then pickles. All right. Oh, well, so you're going to want to put the pickle right at the end. <laughs> you're going to want one. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to want one. <laughs> that was planned. That was staged. <laughs> okay, so you're going to want to get this piece Oop, and roll There it. we go. All right. And you said, now, you can tie it. So traditionally, or... too, you, you tie them. Uh, you do a okay. rough tie. But at home, my, my, my dad didn't have time for that. So, uh, so what we do is we're going to put it in a pan. So this pan is already warm because you want a hard serum, which... And you put them upright. A, you put them upright. Upright. Huh. And, then, and then what you do to hold them is you get two potatoes or you get potatoes and you stick them in to hold them in. So we're going to let that go. We're going to go on to the next process and go into the cartoffel poppers while okay. this is cooking. So the oil is already hot. You, you want to cook it around 325 to 350. We always got to clean. Uh, 325 to 350. And uh, they only take a second. So if you blink, they're, 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 they're done. They're done. <laughs> so... You can either do it with a spoon. Today we're doing a spoon. Or you can do an ice cream scoop as big as you want it, as small as you want it. So today, because this is a small little fryer, we're just going to do, you know, about an ounce and a half. I'm going to just put them right in. My dad used to say that this is where chefs always failed at CIA because they would come up and there would be nothing left in the basket. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, actually, deep frying is there's an art to deep frying. Very much so. And uh, uh, my sous chef and I are very lucky that, that, that we've done these over and over and over. All right, they're actually looking good. So we're, so we're good. So as we're doing that, we can start getting the pan hot for the. Uh, spatzle. So the pan has to be really hot for a spatzle in order for it so it doesn't stick because it is flour. Uh, this one is just flour, a little bit of egg, and uh, water. So when it hits the heat, if your pan is too, you know, not hot enough, it's just going to plain stick and then it's miserable trying to get it off. So now you said your grand, your grandfather was a pastry chef? So my, my, my dad, unfortunately, was born in 47, and so right after the war. And so um, my, my, his mother was a German teacher for the uh, U.S. Army. So she met him, uh, my grandfather. Uh, what we know of him, because uh, he obviously went back to the States, uh, what we know of him is that he was a pastry chef. So there's two pictures of them standing in front of the, all these pastries and with the big chef hat on and 
and it looked pretty cool. Have you ever, do you do, do you bake as well? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a definite. <laughs> well, so, so, so in culinary school, I, I did uh, one year of pastry and one year of uh, savory. In order to pass culinary school, I had to come up with a recipe. And uh, so uh, the cake, the little chocolate cake that we have at the Barrow's house uh, is the recipe I came up with uh, 16 years ago now. And uh, that's how I passed. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, that's a good that. story. That's a good story. <laughs> All right, so the cartoufle poppers are done, and so we'll let them rest up there for a little while. And so what we want to do is get your applesauce. Have you ever, now you've worked all over the world, so where in, have you ever worked in Germany? No, but no. I worked in Brussels. Okay. I, I worked in uh, uh, Florence, Italy, and uh, at a place called Villa Belvedere, little villa outside of Florence, near Mercatali, and... Uh, San Gimiano and all those little towns. And then uh, I went to Paris and cooked at a place called La Trois. And uh, Do you have a favorite place that you've been? I hate them all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I like Villa Belvedere. It's very laid back. The Italians are just very, you know, they're very passionate people, but they're very laid back. You know, the first time I, I came to Vermont, I never thought I would ever end up in Vermont. You know, I'm from big city, San Antonio. Where's Vermont at? I had never thought in my, in, in my wildest dreams that, that, that I would ever end up in, in Dorset. But whenever I, I got the call to come interview, and I met Colleen, met John and Neil at the Dorset Inn, you know, I said, okay, this is cool. And then, uh, you know, I cooked with them, hung out with them, got to know them, and really enjoyed myself. So very fortunate. Stephen Lauren, the owners, uh, are probably hands down probably some of the best owners I ever worked with so um, they're, they're, you know and you survived Vermont winters I don't even wear a, a heavy coat <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's uh, you're fine it, it, I'm fine That's right. so with all of the hype now these days which didn't exist when my dad was a chef of, of all these top chef shows and what, what do you think about the, the industry you re would you recommend somebody who's a senior in high school to go to culinary school? God, no. <laughs> so, uh, I'd say stay away. But, I mean, to, to, to be a cook, to be a chef, and so uh, to be a cook, to be a chef in this industry, uh, you've got to have a lot of dedication and, and, and patience. You lose a lot. I've lost a lot more than what I've gained. Uh, in, 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 in this. Do so, you think it's a calling similar to like teaching or being a nurse? I think it's actually genetics. So someone in your family somewhere has to be able to cook. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's your mom or your dad, whether they're professional or not, uh, it, it's kind of in your blood. Uh, yeah. So it's just like playing music. If no one in your family plays music, chances are you're not going to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, you kind of, I, I, I had three ways to go in my life, I think. To be a mechanic like my, like my dad, be in the military, which I already done, or to cook. And so, you know, I was not going to be a mechanic. I'm terrible. <laughs> so, 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 you know, uh, I chose to cook, and it stuck with me. And, uh, again, you know, you grow up. You start off making minimum wage, working 16 hours, and uh, you know it takes 20 plus years to actually ever uh, be able to survive, really. So. Uh, What's your favorite food to make? I just like cooking in general. Right yeah. now, right now I'm getting made fun of a lot because I like cooking Asian. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so like Indian spices, yeah. Asian food, it's just interesting. So this would be the end product. So this is essentially how, how I would send out the plate. We're going to start finishing off the, the, the main, main course. There's a lot of interesting history just in food and how things kind of come, uh, come about. Uh, but uh, They like sour things, similar to, like you said, your grandmother was very stubborn. Very stubborn. <laughs> she, she, she was very stubborn and sour herself. And sour. So, good. <laughs> But Alf her name was Alfreda, and she was actually a really strong and independent lady. And she, uh, she, she worked with, ended up retiring, working with newborns, uh, pre with premature. And that's what she, when she came to the States, that's what she did. 
Um, so this is the end result of the Reladen. Looks like what it sounds like, like a rolled piece of meat. And you can smell it. It's probably one of my favorite smells. Yep. So yeah. when my dad made this, we knew that we were in trouble. When my dad made Reladen, <laughs> it, <laughs> And why is that though? Like, what? I don't know. My, <laughs> it was a sign. Yeah, well, my dad, this is that typical German. He never let you know when he was mad until he let you know. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to use a little slurry tonight to, to thicken our sauce. So we're using cornstarch, though, which is gluten-free. So in order to get the slurry thickened, you got to have this as oh, hot yeah. as you can get. Usually need a whisk, or doesn't matter. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. We didn't look for it. here. Oh. Well. Here you go. Innovation. Voila. Um, it's a little big, but. Well, and this is a little thick. Ooh. So the idea with uh, yeah. with barrels right now is to have a southern uh, southern Vermont flair with the Texas twist to it. Um, so I'm bringing a lot of Texas influence as much as I possibly can pack. And uh, smoking meats. So smoking you... meats, doing a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of everything. Mexican food. You guys uh, are having a. Are, aren't you, are you doing a? Texas Tuesday. Texas Tuesday. I so yeah. uh, so we do a little bit of everything on Texas Tuesday. Chicken fried steak, or uh, again, I think tomorrow's gonna be chicken fried steak and ribs, smoked ribs. Um, so Texas is huge. It's about the size of Europe. Yeah, that's gonna be hot. <laughs> uh, so, so now the sauce is ready. So actually, I'll move this since it's, since you're leaning over there. Um, I'm so, just liking the smell of the red cabbage. Oh, it smells so good. That's yep. a really good red cabbage. Yep. Um, so, so, and then summertime's coming up, so we're going to have uh, New England dishes along with Texas dishes um, and, and, and just keep on uh pushing and we also have a bakery uh dorset rising across the street so we get a lot of our desserts and a lot of our breads mm -hmm. pastries uh from from them and uh and when we get too busy or uh anything like that we also have the support of the Dor uh, dorset in it so put the spatzel in the in the pan we're gonna hit it with a little bit of water just a little bit because you shock it and again it's gonna want to stick a little bit so, and what's that? This is a garlic herb butter or fiend Ooh, butter. Yeah. So this has garlic, shallot, uh, parsley, rosemary, thyme. Technically, it should have some dill in it, but I don't think we have dill in it today. So good helping of it. Can't be shy. <laughs> and you just take your spoon. Oh my God, that looks amazing. Yeah. So some people like it really, really crispy, as you could, you know, as you're gonna be able to see. But sometimes it doesn't add. It, it doesn't do what you want it to do. Because in the restaurant industry, it, 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 every pan ha has its own attitude, <laughs> and, and so uh, you know, one pan is gonna cook it excellent, and the next pan you pull down, you're gonna try to do the same thing, and it's not gonna be so good. So. Uh, this is a good pan. <laughs> so, so lo and behold, we, we have some crunch to it. And yeah, this I one, like I like spetzel a little bit crunchier. Yeah, so so you Definitely. can fry it. You yep. could do mac and cheese with it. You can do a lot of different things. Um, so this one, this is also a no boil spetzel. Um, usually with spetzel, you got to put it. Uh, into boiling water, and you take it right out of the water, put it right into the pan right. in order to crisp it. But this one, and we're done. So now we're going to plate it. <laughs> this is kind of cool. One of our cameramen is a Long Trail alum who I went to Germany with. So is this looking good, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to plate it, we'll put everything in the middle. Then we're gonna take a relad or a laden, and we're gonna slice it. So 
So right in, so you'll be able to see the layers of the bacon, the onion, the So you pickle. could tell, like, if, you, if, if, if any of the Desperate Housewives of Beverly Hills are coming to stay at the Barrow's house, they could eat this because it's gluten-free. Yeah, but, right? but, so. yeah, but it's meat, so they can... <laughs> <laughs> so, well so, said. So, 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 so they're gonna want just a spatzel. Um, okay, and then we're gonna sauce it. So you're gonna want to put it right over, it. and so the Yum. so so the spatzel will soak up the 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 gravy. And then we come over here, and we get some of this beautiful red cabbage, really good color. It means it's not overcooked. Now, what's the, what are the smells that I'm smelling out of the red cabbage? Um, you got star anise. Mm -hmm. You got okay. uh, cinnamon. You got juniper berry, sugar, and Yoder Farm uh, cider. Yep. And that's it. That's it. And just ferments. And oh, my gosh. So... so. One of my favorite German words, ausgezeichnet, <laughs> which means amazing. Oh, I just made a mess. <laughs> Yum. And we got the Reladen dish. All right, so here we go. So uh, lastly, we would say. As we just seen. Guten Appetit. So thank you, JJ. Amazing. Awesome. So we are going to take a little bit of a break, come back, and you guys get to ask some questions from both of, well, mostly you. So. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It is time for questions, mainly for our chef extraordinaire, I imagine. So who's got some questions out there? Yes. Hey, hey John, when are we going to have a German night at the Barrel's house? <laughs> I knew that was going to come. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. <laughs> Oktoberfest. There well, you go. Uh, That's a good answer. <laughs> so, October, uh, well, we have two months of German fest, Oktoberfest and then Versfest, so, uh, which runs back to back. So maybe then. <laughs> Can you describe the sauce that you made on top of the roulotten? So the sauce, oh, I, that's actually a good question. So the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're in trouble now. Oh, You're right. in trouble now. Uh, so the sauce is actually, uh, it's everything that comes out. So the reason why you put so much onions in there is because all the juices from the onions that comes in. So uh, the trick is, again, to have your pan really hot so you sear it so you get the beef flavor, you get your meat flavor then the onion juice and the pickle juice goes into that, and that's what builds the sauce. I put uh, Queen City Porter. I know it's not German, but uh, but you want to use a Dunkel or a very heavy dark beer. And, Dunkel. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, to, to, to braise it off, my dad would just put water. Uh, I like to use, I, I like it very yeasty. And then uh, I put some uh, demi-glaze in there to bind it. Um, or you can use a beef base. So the grocery store, Nor makes a really good beef base or a demi, uh, also a little demi package. You can add it to your sauces. And then, of course, you finish it off with either the potato starch or rice starch. Or uh, Don't really use too many roux in, in Germany. You do for a few things. Uh, um, but you use the natural, mainly like the potato starches, a lot of them. So that's kind of the sauce. It's just mainly the drippings from the roulade and we just build it up a little bit, and that's it. I guess just in general, um, being an industry chef, what is your favorite thing about cooking every day? Um, it, it's kind of the, the, the satisfaction of trying, trying to be able to serve people. So in, 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 the, in this industry, you have to be willing to, uh, you know, number one, you have to be humble, so, and, and you have to be willing to take a lot of criticism. But when you get something right, the 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 thrill of uh, of that is probably the ultimate. Also, it's just like a firefighter or a policeman. Uh, when you're going to a fire, you get that rush, and when everything starts coming in, all the tickets, and you start cooking, and and the sound of the fans and the sound of the fire, it, it's kind of like a it's uh, exhilarating. 
So we might gripe back there. All, all cooks gripe, and we're all we, we're tired. We, we don't want to do this. But at the end of the day, uh, I feel good whenever I walk out, especially if I had a really good night uh, and the service went well, and, and and you know you feel like you achieved something. That's probably the best part. Also, now later on, uh, now that I'm coming to the pinnacle or to you know get into my early 40s. Uh, but which is kind of you know you start off in your 20s and once you get to your 40s hopefully you're good. But <laughs> what about your 50s? Well, that's <laughs> me. Uh, your 50s are your golden years. <laughs> uh, uh, but 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 now but now is also giving it a chance to be able to teach the kids and hopefully be able to show them what's right and wrong and show them what your mistakes were. Because, um, you know, we, we all go through it uh, growing up, uh, especially in this business. So you want to make sure the younger generation don't make the same mistakes as you did and so on and so forth. So that's also the, the cool part. Um, and then con continuing learning as well. So if you're not learning, you're not cooking. So you constantly have to learn constantly have to strive for better um, can't can't take no for an answer and just do it so we want to thank GNAT um, they provide so much for this community um, and I'm excited I work with them on a um, from, with my long trail hat on and I'm just so appreciative of all the different shows that they do and this was a great opportunity for me it's lots of fun to do this meet you and uh, I'm right up the road from you every day, so now you're not you're stuck with me. No oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, good appetit. We're going to dig into some great German food, and thank you everybody for coming. Thank you.